uh, in this video tutorial I'm going to cover JavaScript array um, I will talk about the concept of JavaScript array why do we need them how to use them and uh, you will learn the basic and the fundamental of JavaScript array uh, by the end of the very first video which is one of many videos that I'm going to create for the JavaScript array you should be able to understand uh, how it works how array works and how to use them and access different elements Let's assume I have a, a library and I want to organize this library. So what I would do is I would create shelves. Uh, each shelf consists of one to many cells. And uh, I just want to organize this so I can let people access this shelf and uh, drop or pick up a book. So I give a name to this shelf. I call it history. And in order to go further and make this more organized, I start assigning some uh, ID to every single cell, right? I can create as many shelves as I need uh, is based on the need that I have in this library. For instance, I can create a shelf uh, that contains a math book, right? Uh, so I will simply go and uh, create this shelf. I label it as uh, math, so I'll give the name math. And then again, my shelf consists of uh, many cells and I will ident put, identify each of these cells with a unique number from one to three, four, five, for instance, right? Now, what I want to do is I have so many people coming and asking me uh, for an uh, address of a book or a map of where the book is. I want to come up with something that I can easily tell them, okay, go to history cell number two, right? But since I have so many people, I want to be able to uh, write a simple uh, text that identifies a cell in one of these shelves that I have in here. So what I'm going to do is I want to, somebody comes in, I can say, okay, go to history cell number two, but instead of saying it, I want to be able to uh, write that. So that's what I'm going to do. I go, so history score bracket, I mean, and a square one, right? In this case, uh, most people will be able to understand uh, what do I mean by uh, this, right? You look at the name, so you realize history is the shelf name, and then you look at the square and you see one in there, so probably you can uh, find out this is uh, cell number one. For Matt, the same thing. I can say Matt. In this case, I will put two. So this indicates the Matt shelf, cell number two. So what I want to do is I want to digitalize this. I want to be able to type these maps and pass it to different people. Or even I want to just type it in my phone, right? The problem is I cannot have a square and a number in between uh, uh, in my keyboard. I cannot do that. Uh, so instead of uh, doing this, because I, I want to be able to pass this information to other people digitally, I can write the shelf name, use square brackets, and put the cell number in between the square bracket. It still represents a cell, but obviously uh, is something that I can do in, in my uh, devices, right? Sending the information as a text or typing it into the computer and then being able to print it or pass it on to the other people, right? So again... I can simply do that with any other shelf, and I have less tutorial for people to learn these things, right? Let's see if we got the idea. So I want to test you right now, see if you have uh, understand the new language we use to uh, map different cells. So here I have mat, uh, mat uh, let me see, okay, this is the mat number one is equal to mat cell number two. Right. So what I'm trying to say here is I'm trying to say copy the value that is in the second cell of the match shelf into the first cell of match shelf. So uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, let's put this one an example. I have five in cell number two. So simply I have to copy the same value into number one as well. Uh, let me let me give you another example or let's think about another example. What if I just go ahead and say mat cell number three? is equal uh, mat uh, cell number one uh, plus mat cell number uh, two. So we know that the right side of the equation always executed first. So this calculation will be done. Whatever is in mat cell number one and cell number two will be added. In this case, it's going to be 10. And then uh, the result of this uh, will be written into the uh, cell number three, right? So uh, five plus five equal 10, and then that will be written in there. So uh, what we have to learn about this is all the, uh, the array work like this as well. It's a structure that array uses uh, 
to be able to access the element and so on. One thing is the array starts from zero rather than one. So instead of referencing the very first element by value one, we have to reference it using value zero. So if I want to access the math first location, I just simply go ahead and put math square bracket zero, which reference the very first element. Uh, if I want to access the last element of the array, simply I have to go and put the square bracket and reference or index of the last element. In this case, is four. So simply I have to put math square bracket and value four in there. But uh, we have to we have to think in the f. What if the math? Uh, what if the array length is bigger? What if the array has more element and we cannot count this number of element? In that case, we will use a property that is called length. So I can simply go ahead and say array name dot length, which gives me the number of uh, elements this array has. In this case, I have five elements in math uh, shelf, right? Now, if I want to access the last element of the math array or shelf, I have to do minus one since I start from zero and the last index of this shelf is four so math dot length gives me five minus one is uh, four i hope you enjoyed the video thank you and have a good day